In the earlier talks, uh, we saw how to write a test bench. Uh, we just started uh, um, writing for a combination circuits as such, and uh, uh, some of you felt that um, the signals involved were uh, rather large. So I am uh, presenting now to start with uh, 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 more uh, simple uh, design as such. We have uh, seen earlier uh, what a test bench is. It is basically a uh, block. Uh, you had to code it using once again the Verilog as such and uh, you have a design which is uh, required to be tested. This is the uh, design uh, you had done. So you need to test this. So how do you test this? Uh, you have to apply what is known as stimulus. This is uh, nothing other than uh, application of uh, inputs in your design module and uh, finally you had to see the outputs and uh, we will see in a minute uh, how we do that. And uh, so here we have seen once the design is completed the functionality must be tested and uh, therefore we apply a, st a stimulus and uh, finally check the results. This we have already seen earlier. Now we start with uh, a simple example. Let us say uh, the simplest possible example can be just an AND gate your design has nothing more than uh, uh, two input AND gate as such and it has two inputs A and B and uh, its output is Y and uh, mind you all these nomenclatures uh, pertain to the design module alone not to the test bench. In the test bench we can rename this as we like and as per our convenience and uh, we need to test this. How to test its functionality if you have uh, verified the two table is working. Uh, in, uh, for all its combinations then it stands tested and for example this truth table for AND gate is given here for various combinations of A, B and you can also depict the same thing in terms of a timing diagram which is shown on the left here and uh, A and B and Y are exactly the same sequence except you need to read it vertically here instead of horizontally. You see these three entries triple zero here and that is precisely appearing here and uh, next entry 0, 1, 0 is here and 100 0, 0 followed by 111 1 here exactly the same thing. Now you also see one more uh, time axis here because once you say timing diagram you need to refer to a, um, uh, a time base as such and uh, let us say we start uh, arbitrarily at uh, 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 one point we refer it to as a 0 point. So time starts here right it always goes forward uh, uh, fundamentally right unless you take the uh, reference somewhere uh, midpoint. So uh, to start with we will uh, simplify that uh, saying that this is uh, going to start at 0 and um, uh, let us say time uh, axis is marked in nanosecond 
uh, so you see that at 20 nanosecond we make a second transition here so actually if you see here one is naturally um, pointing to uh, the high state here so that is why we say it is 1 so 0 1 and 0 it is flat here at the low level here and uh, once again this is uh, similar explanation, explanation holds good here and at 40 uh, nanoseconds uh, we have made another change to 100 and 60 uh, triple 1 and uh, this can go on and um, on and on and depending upon how complex the circuitry is. Uh, as far as this is concerned uh, you can deem it to be um, uh, a complete test if you had you tested all these four combinations here right. So now uh, we will apply the very same block that we have seen earlier the test bench now is this and uh, this test bench as I mentioned it is also a, a verilog file and with a naturally a dot v extension let us say we name it as and underscore 2 in underscore test dot v uh, retaining the same convention that I have been telling uh, earlier and uh, since the design is actually this and 2 in which is here. And what we have already seen uh, timing diagram, true table, etc., pertain to this AND gate as such. I have written once again the very same labels there for IOs. And uh, here you would notice that I have renamed and, and uh, renamed B input in the test bench as IN, right? And similarly, OUT also I have renamed here. And in fact, uh, you can rename A also. Any meaningful names can be uh, given for this uh, ports. Uh, once I say ports it refers to either input or output and uh, you can ch check the timing diagram as you have seen earlier uh, exactly the same thing you can see in a simulator which we will be covering uh, in the uh, next lecture most probably and uh, so uh, that is what is mentioned here and uh, we have a design module to start with this is the design module and uh, the code for, Verilog code for that is quite simple. We have only uh, to list uh, first uh, identify the module design module which is and underscore 2 in and uh, this is as, as usual uh, a module and n module uh, defines that there is a module design module and you need to list all the IOs here say uh, A and B are inputs and we declare here and notice that uh, now in the single line it has been put uh, earlier we used to put uh, line by line because this is a very small design you can as well club all the inputs and outputs and output happens to be just one and uh, note that every statement is terminated by a semicolon right and uh, you have also to disc um, describe what y is since we are going to use just an assign statement which you have already seen uh, for implementing this and which is nothing but y equal to a and b this is the symbol for and which you have already uh, familiar with. And uh, this is declared as a wire because it is an assigned statement. In design, it will be wire, and in test bench, it will be a different thing. So, we will have a look at the two and make a comparison. And the comments are all self explanatory here, I do not have to go through that. So, this is what we have already seen in the block here. This is the design, right. Now, coming to the test bench, this is what we wanted to learn because signals were too many uh, in the previous uh, lecture uh, for combination circuits we uh, take just a simple thing and write only uh, a full fledged test bench for uh, this particular application and then we um, resume where we left for the combination circuits. And uh, now we are going to see uh, the test bench as I mentioned before uh, this uh, file is dot uh, v extension this file is different from this uh, although you can put both in a single file and then call stimulus as you see in uh, general textbooks. I do not follow this because uh, if the uh, our ultimate goal is to design uh, VLSI systems. So, that um, if you see the uh, length of the code it will be enormous and if you take this approach of uh, stimulus you will uh, get in, uh, run into difficulties because you cannot uh, make out what you are uh, doing because you are um, indulging in so many uh, signals as such. That is why we will uh, straight away even for a simple example like this we will adopt the uh, right approach which is applicable for any size uh, file as such any big project also can be covered in the same uh, vein. 
So, uh, here as I mentioned uh, input A here is still retained as A and uh, input B in the design is renamed within the test bench as N and similarly the out uh, connotates this uh, Y of the design here. So, this uh, we have seen statement by statement and that it is conforming to the design we have already pictorially depicted there. And now we start on the uh, test bench as such. So, this is a test bench for functional checking of the design. So, put it on comments and uh, all titles you can uh, use a comment like this. And uh, we need to include the design file that is why we have a uh, reverse stick here and uh, include is the uh, inclusion of the file name. So, this is similar to the C structure as such and uh, remember the quotes here uh, to describe that this is a design file along with the uh, dot v extension you have to give. If you forget dot v then it will complain uh, I mean the compiler will complain and this is the design file as such. And we have also a time base uh, we have already seen in uh, this timing diagram here that uh, we have marked nanoseconds etcetera. So, the this timing uh, will be covered uh, in this test bench as such how it is done we will have a look. So, for that we need to declare a time base that is why this has been done and again uh, tick here then say time scale without any break here it is a single word as such and uh, the time base actually is mentioned here if you want 1 microsecond you give 1 us right there is no mu in the normal uh, uh, character that you have on the uh, keyboard. So, you use u there right and for picosecond p similarly m for millisecond and so on and different uh, timings are there. You can refer to a standard uh, Verilog textbook to get a little more information on this. And uh, how much accuracy resolution that you want for this is specified here and uh, this happens to be a 0.1 nanosecond and you can easily get just by dividing uh, whatever number you have by 1000 in order to uh, step down to next scale from pico to uh, nano it is a 1000 fold uh, difference. So, uh, it is very handy to uh, uh, divide by 1000 so that you can quickly know if you want to convert it into nanosecond. And uh, okay, uh, we declare the um, uh, module for this this test bench we had to declare the module once again just as you declared for the design file as such uh, this is the place we are doing it. Uh, Okay. This is named as combination circuits because I use the very same file therefore, it appears to be different here. So, uh, module name and this need not be same as I mentioned earlier right, uh, but it is good practice to maintain the same name otherwise you cannot keep track of it. Here because I um, just to clear uh, your uh, doubts further I added this. So, this appears to be little um, extraneous. So, anyway just kindly bear with me for, for that difference and uh, we need to uh, declare the uh, test module as such and uh, no dot v extension here it is only the module name it is not the file name. So, we just stick on only to, uh, this uh, bare minimum without the extension and uh, here in that um, uh, some of you did not understand why reg wire, uh, wire here. So, it was uh, already explained earlier I will explain it once again. See here uh, if you see the timing diagram what we need to do here is we apply this um, uh, stimuli here A, B or stimuli here. Um, so, we apply here and hold it till you want to change here at 20 nanosecond. So, you had to tell the uh, system hold hold the value till I say uh, till I veto that. So, uh, that is the meaning of register here in this uh, test bench are you clear? So, that is what we mean we want to hold A and N you notice that we are declaring N here not as B because B pertains to the design as such whereas, um, this pertains to the test bench it is exactly the same signal, but we have renamed it as N here. Uh, for the sake of uh, test bench as such. So, that is how uh, we put reg. So, in order to hold this values till you change it later on. So, we need to declare it as a reg. Reg uh, once again is uh, expansion is register. So, uh, it is only to say that it memorizes right and uh, where 
uh, we have um, like this okay i will come back uh, to this once again because uh, unless i explain this uh, i can't explain this so i'll come back to this right now uh, you have to um, uh, call the module uh, design module as such so that is called instantiation in uh, um, wedlock coding right so you this is the design module we started with dot v extension but that uh, inside we had declared the module name as this alone right so when we refer when you call those uh, that uh, any of this mo uh, design modules you call only by this uh, module name not with the file extension right uh, i hope you are clear about the file and uh, discriminate the file and uh, module as such and uh, as uh, mentioned earlier we can have like this any number of very same modules called several times so each time you call you how do you distinguish it a distinction is done by this u1 u2 and so on it is similar to having different uh, packages on a circuit board as such which we already seen earlier and then another thing uh, mentioned earlier was also this uh, what is called connect ports by name so if you want to uh, connect any io port say for example a b y are all uh, pertain to the actual design there whereas a in out corresponds to the uh, test bench here so this what this is the nomenclature we adopt here the um, advantage of this one is you can put uh, a say at the last or in between or anywhere so uh, suppose you forget uh, it is very easy for us to uh, remember names rather than the order in which we wrote if it has some 20 signals or 30 signals or even more you get drowned in which order you had mentioned earlier in the design so you are likely to, you will most probably make the mistake and uh, changing order if you change the order the whole thing will be chaotic so uh, we call that uh, by name so that's what it says here connect ports by name are you clear on this score because this was uh, uh, not clear earlier because too many signals were involved and uh, in fact you can have a look at the block diagram we started then it will become ultra clear see in test bench we, uh, we use a in out for the ios whereas we use a b and y in the design module as such and that's what we have already seen here see in design module a b y is used and in test we need to use a in and uh, out right and notice that there is no such thing as input or output declaration here because this happens to be the topmost level and uh, there is no further um, uh, higher level than this so everything is contained in this level so then what is the need for uh, returning any ios I was imply it is going to the external world, right? Mind you, what all we are doing is we are making a chip, right? Although it resembles a C program, it is not C program. It is a hardware design language, right? So what ultimately uh, resides in the chip will be something like this. Even this is not correct. Actual transistors uh, take its place, right? So this is only symbolic again here, right? For circuit designers, they are uh, familiar with this uh, more than uh, transistors. So uh, what I was saying is this one nanosecond uh, is the actual time base. So in the timing diagram we have seen uh, here, from here to here it is marked. So uh, if you say, uh, suppose you have 20 there. So this time base is uh, in nanosecond. You will have further smaller marking also in that. If you will see in the simulator when you really simulate all this. So there will be, but uh, fundamental unit is uh, in nanosecond that is what it means. But suppose it, it can show even 1 nanosecond here uh, on a, as a finer scale this is a major uh, graduation uh, it is something like your um, uh, ruler that you have a scale uh, similar to that what you see in uh, um, simulator also is like that. So uh, that 1 nanosecond um, although you are uh, what you are seeing outside is 1 nanosecond what is the actual uh, resolution what accuracy so that is what is implied there by that uh, picosecond uh, which is the second uh, here so it simply means it is uh, accur uh, accurate up to 0 0.1 nanosecond that is what so the 1 nanosecond is accurate to 0 0.1 nanosecond otherwise you will get a doubt whether it is 1 nanosecond or 2 nanosecond right so that is the difference so now we start on uh, with a new thing what is called initial see in um, 
these are all basically a behavioral statement as such. So, when we say initial, uh, it is uh, what we mean is we want to uh, apply those stimulus as such. Here, uh, this is the core for the uh, test bench. Suppose, uh, uh, in the timing diagram, what, uh, what we wanted is here we wanted to apply in the first instance at 0 nanosecond uh, A and B to be 0, 0 each. So, after 20 nanoseconds, 0, 1. So, you just remember every 20 nanosecond uh, here we wanted to apply. So, that is what we are going to do right now. How to write that? It is quite simple. We are in 0 nanosecond if it is not mentioned. There is no harm in putting uh, mentioning 0 nanosecond. How to mention we will see shortly. And uh, we, want, we wanted A to be 0 and in to be 0. Mind you, we are in the test bench. So, you use in not B, right? Are you clear? Otherwise, it will report error. And uh, you apply 0, 0, that is what you want for the first combination and it should be at time 0. Now, uh, next thing you want to apply 0, 1 at what time? 20, after 20 nanosecond. So, you mention this is the special uh, marking for uh, indicating that it is time, right? This is how uh, um, uh, Verilog recognizes that you are mentioning after a delay of 20 nanosecond, then only I need to apply this. Are you clear? So, after uh, 0 uh, nanosecond, you apply this, it interprets like that. Then when it comes to this statement, it says wait for 20 nanosecond. Uh, after doing this one, immediately it will come to the statement, but it cannot proceed because you are uh, saying wait. So, that is what you mean by this. So, you wait for 20 nanosecond, then apply the fresh input. And the, uh, so, by doing so, you are getting precisely the same waveform that you have already seen earlier. Are you clear? And uh, so, is the case for other combinations. 1, 0, then 1, 1. And one more thing uh, I need to mention is, we started with 0 nanosecond, then we went on to 20 nanosecond. So, what will be the time here? It says 20, but it is not 20. It is cumulative. So, 20 plus 20 you had to take, right? And uh, that is what you understand here. So, you can see the sequential nature here, if you use this uh, timing element as such. On the other hand, if you do not put any timing, all this will be uh, processed simultaneously, because we are dealing with hardware. In C, what will happen? You go statement by statement and there will be delay from one statement, no matter uh, how many gigahertz you have put, right? So, it will take finite number of uh, cycles and go to the next only after uh, it has processed one statement. So, it is a sequential statement, all the microprocessors, DSPs, right? In contrast to that, this FPGA and A6 are all uh, concurrent, all of them no matter how many thousands of statements you may have here, one minute, let me complete this. Thousands of statements you may put here, all of them will be processed simultaneously. This is because what uh, all these are translated right into chips uh, gates as such and that is the reason it is precisely the same as you had had earlier uh, with uh, circuit boards putting so many. Um, uh, packages, digital IC packages. Are you clear about that? Although we write like a uh, program, it is actually end uh, result is actually the uh, real hardware. So, that makes the difference between a C and uh, this. Uh, I may know your question. Uh, is there a provision for me to write 20, 40, 60, etcetera? Because at some point if I want to know the uh, change, yes. I, if I want to know the time, I have to right from start I have to keep counting, right? Yes to know what, what is that particular time to changes. Yes. Is there a provision to uh, write it? There is no provision in this here, but you can artificially do it. Suppose you have a, um, you allocate some uh, variable, say a counter. We have already seen how to put a counter. So, what prevents you from putting a counter and keeping track of the actual time element and you can see that particular counter uh, and you can do that only if you run, but not pro, uh, while looking at the code here. There is no way looking at the code. But when you execute, you can have it. But uh, even a counter is a superfluous thing because the time axis itself will reveal where you are. So, that is also a redundant thing only, right? So, there is no provision. And then uh, we have uh, almost finished the test bench. So, easy it is. Uh, now, what we say is uh, we have already accounted for all the combinations. We give little more extra time. Uh, we run for little longer time. Uh, so, as uh, not to miss any information. For example, it will take another 20 nanosecond 
right uh, to complete that uh, 1 1 right. So, it, uh, it would be sufficient if you put just 20 here and uh, uh, you can put any number there is no hard and fast rule for that. Only thing is uh, make sure in sequential circuit later on when we go um, we may not be in a position to assess this correctly. So, you um, play safe by putting a large figure there right and in simulator uh, um, uh, the moment you um, uh, load and uh, run your uh, code uh, pat comes the reply. So, no matter how much how big this value is right so long as it is uh, 10 uh, below some 10,000 or so. Uh, are you clear? And then uh, you had to signal that you have finished the whole thing. So, you had to uh, then there is a special command here using a dollar here and uh, followed by stop. It stops all this uh, testing right and uh, finally, this is only temporary stop and you can resume if you wish and uh, uh, I forget the command for resuming. And, um, uh, suppose you want to finish the uh, entire thing, terminate the simulation, you can give this. If you do not give this also, it does not really matter, right. And finally, we, we started with uh, initial, then begin, a matching end is this, right. And we also started a module, so there must be an end module. So, this completes the test bench for the uh, most primitive uh, design, just two input and gate. Are you clear about this? Then, with this background, we can uh, go to the next, right. This what we have uh, started earlier, I will uh, go little fast because you are already familiar with most of the thing and we have already explained that and now it should be uh, just a cake work for you, right. So, we have seen uh, um, that uh, include will uh, uh, include the design as such here in this case combination circuits and uh, time scale is also same exactly the same and uh, that is what we put here with a resolution of 0.1 nanosecond which was not uh, earlier. And then we start the module, uh, this is the test bench. So, we give the combination circuits underscore test, a meaningful name, right. And uh, as usual, we declare all the inputs, and uh, um, inputs are all marked here ABC. You remember that we had uh, done so many logical um, uh, uh, gates, right. And uh, here is the one if you want to recollect. All this we have already covered, and uh, that is precisely what we have here. Right. And here in test bench, you have to declare all inputs as reg in order to hold the value, right. So, we saw 8 inputs for um, 8 input marks. Then we had a magnitude comparator which compared 2 numbers, and uh, they are all inputs. What we are going to speak uh, 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 up to this point are all uh, inputs as such. So, here uh, size is also taken into account. And I, I had forgotten that uh, wire earlier, right? I didn't explain that wire earlier, so I'll explain it here because it's fundamentally the same. And uh, here um, we uh, we may have uh, we have already seen we are um, um, how to invoke um, uh, um, a design module, and uh, you may have several design modules, and uh, may, you may invoke that. So in the course of invoking. You may like to have one uh, one of the signals or more of one or more of the signals from one module um, to be used in some other modules. Uh, so, how do you um, uh, declare those uh, signals? You declare them as wire because it is a physical wire from one IC to another. Its uh, counterpart is that it is analogous to that. So, that is the reason why we declare it as a wire, right. Uh, this is applicable only in the case of test bench, do not confuse it with the design, there the declarations are uh, entirely di different, right. So, based on the uh, environment you are placed in, you have to uh, see. So, the logical reason is clear here, right. So, we want to physically connect, that is why it is a, it has got to be a net and uh, the keyword for net here in Verilog is wire, that is why we do this. And these are all single bit outputs. And uh, this dimension we have seen here are all uh, listing of uh, outputs for various combinations. We have done behavioral uh, full ladder, then data flow and uh, gate level, all these are listed here. And this for the magnitude uh, comparator outputs, all of them up to 18. And then we had uh, 
one more uh, design example wherein two numbers are uh, summed. We have already seen uh, n1, n2 earlier and corresponding outputs are this and uh, once again all outputs are declared as wire. Now we call this uh, combination circuits design, we instantiate here. Like this we could have instantiated um, different modules, if there are more than one we could have done and any uh, signal that use uh, may have to be connected to another. That is why we have to uh, declare that particular uh, these signals as wire, I think it is very clear now. And uh, connect ports by name, this also we have seen and uh, I will um, rush it through because it is precisely what you have already seen. Right, I uh, I was here, and uh, last one should not have a comma separation. Right, that's what it is here, and you complete the brackets here, and once again here also you have an initial. Now we are going to apply the stimulus. Uh, this is quite a um, little longer because you have so many signals there and uh, so first uh, at a 0 time we will uh, this is uh, selectors uh, input here and we apply 0 0 0 here right and uh, and we also need for mux and we uh, I just initialize all of them to 0 here and we have a, a magnitude comparator. So, we use uh, t just two numbers uh, to, uh, remember 200 and 199. Right. So, if uh, obviously 200 is greater than 199, so a yeah, uh, greater output, a more output will be set and so on. So, uh, you can keep on changing your input data for various combinations you keep on changing at 0 time I uh, apply all these inputs and then um, and keep on changing uh, at a different points of time. At 10 nanoseconds I am changing uh, one of the mux, I am applying just one. So, uh, I will be applying systematically one after another, so that it will be easy for you to look at the simulated result uh, one thing at a time, otherwise you will get bogged down in uh, details right. And now I change once again after 10 nanoseconds I am changing the uh, either the same inputs or some other inputs or fresh inputs may come into being here right, so some of them you can see here. And uh, we will not really worry about these things right now, when we go into the simulation we will uh, refer to this and uh, go in more detail. Uh, it is sufficient that the whole thing runs in the same sequence right. So, at 10 nanoseconds I am just um, uh, uh, advancing it by 1 the selector, so that we can have I 1 process. Once again here uh, I 1 is still made 0, uh, I just want to delay that because I wanted to put some more numbers for other modules. So, once again uh, after 10 uh, this is cumulative, so now I think we are in 20 nanosecond. So, you have to unfortunately keep track, but you can always keep track by uh, uh, keying it as a comment here, so that is why I had put uh, at many places. And uh, once again all the uh, inputs Mind you this uh, is a stimulus is only for inputs, you need to only to apply input as such right. So, simulator will tell you I mean give you uh, uh, everything in one shot on uh, as a waveform right, both inputs as well as outputs. So, you can see that comment here, so I have kept track right, at 40 nanosecond again I change different inputs. In this vein, it has it keeps going, so I do not have to go repeat the same thing, and I will finally go into the end. The 140 nanosecond, right? So, it has taken so long, right? How much uh, then we give some more cushion there, uh, uh, so that uh, this being a combination circuit, you do not have to really give much cushion, maybe 20 30 nanoseconds uh, would suffice here but still uh, you can play safe right, uh, uh, but it will be uh, it may be required in sequential circuits as we will see uh, right now. So, that is what I have commented here run uh, long enough to test all possibilities right and the possibilities may spill over beyond this time that is why we need a questioning and as usual we have a stop I have deliberately omitted finish there because it is not really mandatory as such right, 
So finally we have an end because we had a begin, uh, initial begin is that correct and uh, we had uh, we put everything in a module. So uh, corresponding end module must be there. So this completes the test bench for the combination circuits. Just figures alone are put as far as com uh, combination circuits are concerned. This is what we have already seen just now for the test bench. And now we will see the um, uh, sequential circuits test bench, right. And we started with two registers and you can use it for delaying or pipelining and uh, then we have uh, a counter realization and uh, a mono shot realization here and a shift register and a two uh, varieties of shift registers were there, although pictorial it is only one here, right. And uh, then we saw a parallel to serial converter as such and uh, a state machine model also we had seen and finally we have seen a, a pattern sequence uh, director. So this is what we are going to go for our, uh, the test bench as such. Once again here you declare uh, um, give a meaningful name uh, as to what you are doing and then uh, define is a new thing that we are introducing here. So here we are dealing with a sequential circuit. So we need to create some clock, a free running clock. Without a clock there is no life in a sequential circuit. For that matter any digital system uh, needs a clock and a clock uh, in actual practice when you finally make a circuit, I mean a chip, uh, there a clock a generator will be there and that will um, feed into the uh, uh, chip as such which you finally design. But uh, what do we do in the uh, simulation environment? You have to create it once again by the Verilog uh, 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 coding itself. So in order to facilitate this one, uh, we first define what is say what is called a clock period by 2. This is the name that I have given. Uh, if you feel it is too long, you can give any other precise name. Say all this uh, are like a C program which you can give where you can give uh, meaningful names, right. Uh, and what we say is this is unit of time. So uh, this implies uh, there must be a time scale definition also and uh, it may, uh, your compiler may give a warning but you can overrule that warning and uh, you do not have to put time scale every time, right. Uh, you have already taken into account the test bench. So you need the time scale only for the uh, simulation. Uh, mind you this all the times that we have spoken hash etc. Uh, and all this will be filtered out in the uh, during the synthesis process. because. We said that uh, the Verilog designing fundamentally uh, using RTL coding guidelines is to uh, get rid of the te uh, technology dependence, right. We should be independent of the technology and uh, that, ca that is possible only if there is no time element. But we have introduced time element just to facilitate simulation as such and uh, th therefore it appears only in the test bench, right. Uh, in During synthesis it will reject the test bench. And that is the reason why we give uh, in the design we include all the uh, down files, the sub modules of the design inside the design and um, include the design top design file only in the test bench. Are you clear? So this implies uh, you can treat it as a variable here. So this is again a behavioral thing just like initial, right? and uh, they are not RTL compliant mind you. So we have seen earlier uh, what is RTL compliance and uh, what is not. So you should uh, discriminate the two and uh, as usual we are uh, what, what we say, this is equivalent to saying a variable called clock period by 2 is equal to 10 that is all it means right and we include the design here and we declare this test bench module and uh, again a meaningful name and we declare all the uh, output I mean inputs as reg and outputs as wire that is what you see here all this up to this right and uh, all these are wires these are all outputs here and uh, multi bit precision. So we have seen a state machine so those outputs are also listed here and uh, this out corresponds to uh, we have a, um, uh, uh, a pattern sequence director. So that in and out single bit are this, right. So this happens to be the output for that. So we declare it as OR. And uh, we had some counters, etc. Uh, 
I remember not for what module exactly and you can always make it out at the time of simulation you will see in detail and some end of conversion is there. So, I think that was a uh, 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 parallel to serial conversion we had done right. So, pertaining to that these signals are and then we instantiate the uh, design module. This is the design module which we call here, we call it instantiation here and as usual um, you can give the uh, chip I mean uh, chip name right instance name here you call and list all the inputs of the this uh, mind you we are doing this for the design. So, you uh, adopt that uh, calling by uh, connect, uh, connect ports by name we have seen that is the nomenclature we give right. So, uh, here you would appreciate that uh, need for this because suppose I had forgotten and uh, put instead of beats here right um, it will uh, it will be chaotic as I mentioned earlier. So, in order to do that uh, we have um, uh, called by name as such. So, this lists precisely all the um, uh, IOs here and uh, what it is it is mentioned here inputs of state machine here this in 1 and in 2 we used in the state machine and uh, trigger is the mono shot input here and then uh, uh, all this are pertain to the mono shot here says. Then uh, outputs of parallel to serial converter we have already seen uh, earlier uh, corresponding inputs and uh, these are all the outputs here right and outputs of the state machine is here one second listed note that all of them are same. Here uh, one thing I can mention uh, uh, that was the doubt raised in the earlier lecture also you can have different name here because uh, this pertains to this test bench as such whereas this pertains to the design. In design you may call it by one name and here you may call it by a different name because see for example, for um, out here you may actually be using a counter not the out. So, what you do is of course, the, if it is a single bit has no meaning a counter if it is a multi bit for an uh, illustration I am saying. So, you can redefine in this particular uh, test bench you may be using another counter which you want to connect right here. So, what you do is you can uh, call it as a counter one or something like that right. So, only thing uh, that should match is dimension of this variable um, uh, this signal and this signal is that clear and we have uh, completed um, a listing of IOs here in the instantiation and that is why we have the end here. And once again we have initial and um, I do not have to go step by step in this and uh, what all uh, it is uh, sufficient to say that all the inputs that we need for uh, testing this whole sequential circuit uh, will uh, appear one, uh, one at a time right. When the time is ripe for that it will strike here uh, for at a 0 time you initiate all the, this uh, basically uh, uh, some of the input uh, inputs uh, used here say A, B, C are the inputs used for setting or reset uh, of a register and so on. So, we have now uh, this we have not covered as such clock we said uh, is what we are going to generate and we saw that earlier uh, having defined clock uh, divided by 2 or something like that and equating it to 10. So, what it means is it uh, means the clock half time it is not the time period, but uh, half the time period is 10 nanosecond. If you had de defined 1 nanosecond declared uh, time scale as time base as 1 nanosecond that is what is uh, implied there right. And now you had clock is actually a variable here it is a behavioral purely behavioral statement not an RTL uh, coding confirmation right. It is violates the RTL coding right this clock because it is only to create clock for the sake of simulator. It is not the actual chip level clock which needs to be uh, generated separately uh, using another IC or uh, whatever. So, you initiate reset then uh, trigger is for mono shot then if you want to hold all that. So, you can make it uh, either uh, 0 that is a low that is inactive state most of them and active state is 1 right. You can also use 
this one uh, this notation meaning that the one stands for number of bits here. So, it happens to be only one and what it is it is a 0 level low right in binary you have only two states 0 and 1. So, uh, B for binary this tick also you will have to put and then here uh, we had uh, I think this uh, shift register. So, we need to set data right. So, that is 16 bits I am setting it to A A A A because this generates alternate ones and zeros. So, if you, you can also write it in a binary if you wish and uh, so that is what you have here precisely the same thing and uh, this appears to be slightly diff different. data out pertains to parallel to serial control anota right. So, this is the example correct one. Then we apply different inputs for, for this uh, when it should be shifted um, then uh, right or left right. So, uh, for state machine we need in 1 in 2 and so on and uh, we change the um, stimulus now. So, after 20 nanosecond it has been changed from um, uh, 0, 0, 0 to uh, 1 here right. And similarly, uh, now only we are applying the reset this is the power on reset we said or system reset. So, earlier uh, had you noticed that one it would have been 1 right it is 1 here. So, to start with it was 0 nine second let us not reset immediately we will give some time lag and then reset the system right. Uh, one will not reset because this negative here. So, that is active low that is what we have already seen asynchronous uh, active low. So, after that we uh, bring it back to 1 from 0 after 20 nanosecond we uh, bring it back to 0 uh, 1. So, that uh, normal uh, working of the sequential circuit can uh, commence only subsequent to this uh, positive edge clock will arrive only from then onwards its uh, system starts working. So, it is uh, it is uh, the whole affair goes within 20 30 nanosecond right uh, at 40 nanosecond you can see see uh, 40 uh, subsequent to this clock must arrive. So, it may arrive somewhere in between here right but, uh, around 15 and second when we see the simulation we will see that exact timing that you can find out uh, uh, because that clock variable we have again we have made it 0 uh, we will come to that later on when it will uh, change we will see. So, that determines the rising edge of the clock it was 0 then when you make it 1. So, naturally a rising edge is encountered and uh, similarly you keep on changing for various inputs. So, that is what you see here right and this is for the sequential machine uh, basically in 1 and in 2. Yes. So, this is a pattern sequence director and for that here you notice that all along I have been using 10, 20 and so on. I have made this deliberately 5 had I put 20 this pattern sequence director will not work because for simple reason that I explained earlier also while describing this and um, you had to apply um, uh, positive edge of the clock uh, only after subsequent to applying a data and the data must be stable. By doing so I am applying uh, 5 nanosecond earlier the data. I am applying the data so that it will be valid when the uh, actually clock strikes right. So, that is why this is there and again all the uh, inputs change and uh, finally, we will go to the end. So, these are all nothing but uh, the same pattern every 20 nanosecond I am changing the input pattern as per the pattern that we have already listed earlier. And uh, once again we want uh, this being a sequential circuit you give more cushion uh, arbitrarily I gave this one uh, after running the simulation you will know that it may not be required. So, you can always come back change to what you want right thereby quicken the simulation process, but uh, it is a hardly noticeable for these values. So, you do not really have to worry about that 
and finally the test bench is complete with a stop and a dollar finish right which I have uh, not uh, put here if you wish you can put that and finally an end is there and uh, uh, we have not ended the module remember so far. So, now comes your question which will be answered in one statement as I said. So, we said apt, uh, after uh, clock period by 2 this was equated to 10 there which implies 10 nanosecond. That means, you take this decision only every 10 nanoseconds afterwards. This applies for every 10 nanosecond. So, this means I said that all these statements are uh, concurrent as well right. So, uh, this is always block separate block as such. So, here there is no begin no end because it has single statement here and this clock is notice I uh, notice this it is inverted and this symbol is used for equal to as I said before always block must always have this this symbol not the equal to right in assign and initial blocks etcetera you can use that uh, equal to are you all clear with this right and uh, that is how it will toggle right. Finally, for a um, module you need a matching end module as such. With this I complete the test bench and uh, if you have any questions I will be happy to answer right now or uh, offline you can ask. Can you elaborate on that uh, clock last uh, module clock module? Uh, which one? This clock. So, we started with clock equal to 0 right and uh, what is 0 if you invert you will get 1. So, this will happen every 10 nanosecond because this is 10 time at uh, always means that always after 10 nanosecond do this. So, 0 will be 1, 1 will be 0 and yet for eternity it will go on till power fails right. Uh, next time we will see how to uh, use the modulator I mean uh, simulator as such and thank you.